Merry Christmas and welcome to our Christmas Eve service. We had hoped that we would be in the sanctuary by now, but it looks like uh, we will be enjoying this from our home. So we've tried to add a lot of special pieces so that you can participate and listen and experience Christ coming into our lives in a variety of different ways through sight and sound. Uh, through our wonderful musicians that we are grateful for. So join us in this Christmas Eve service. Have your candle in hand. We will be uh, ending with the candlelight piece, and hopefully you can do that from home too. Let us begin.
who's come to earth to bring us joy. And I just want to sing this song to you. It goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift with every breath I'm singing.
still every breath you drew us Jesus into 
into the world, so that all might know of your love. Remind us daily that we are your precious children too. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord.
Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region there were shepherds, living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Well, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. And the lyric that I cannot shake 
is from Judy and Betsy's beautiful proclamation of O Holy Night. The words, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Do you feel weary on this Christmas Eve? I do. I'm weary because it has, seems to have taken so much more energy to create traditions in new ways, to mail out gifts that typically I would hand to people in person, to try to find joy when I hear about others who are desperate for it, to await a vaccine which is ahead of schedule, but still behind our hopes of where we had hoped to be at this time, worshiping in the sanctuary again by Christmas, an ongoing weariness of life, and add to it the absence of gathering together in this beautiful sanctuary, as is tradition for so many people. The absence of the smells and sights and atmosphere that I expect on Christmas Eve. Yes, I am weary. And so this year I pay attention to the weariness of Mary and Joseph in our story. The weariness of having to travel a long distance in those last days of pregnancy. The weariness of trying to find lodging in an overcrowded town. The weariness of giving birth in a barn. Fall on your knees, Judy proclaimed while Betsy accompanied. Yep, I've been there. Days when I just shake my head and fall on my knees in hopes of some angel voices coming to surround me and to lift me up. And yet, weariness is not the fullness of this lyric in this song. A thrill of hope. Not just any hope, but a thrill of hope. A weary world rejoices. Is there rejoicing for the weary this year? And then my mind travels as I look deeper into the Christmas Eve service, emerging from our amazing musicians, the ones who are making Christmas for me this year. And I'm drawn into looking closer at the lyrics of the hymns we have come to know and expect on this Christmas Eve. This year I have looked beyond the words and into the story behind the hymns to peer into what was going on in the author's life and when they were writing the cherished words that we sing. Did you know that the author of O Come All Ye Faithful was caught in the crossfires of a rebellion? John Francis Wade, an Englishman, fled England when another leader of Scotland was trying to take over. The song was a thrill of hope, the weary refugees rejoicing. Leonard Cohen brought a non-religious people into thinking differently about religion through the original Alleluia song. And Cloverton took it a step further in their Christmas Alleluia adaptation that the Rockmans and Kyleen sang with us this evening. A thrill of hope, even the weary unreligious rejoice in. O Holy Night was written by a poet who attended church infrequently, but paid a favor back to his home congregation, and then, sang, and then the song gained interest in America by a northern abolitionists. A thrill of hope, the weary believers rejoice in. Go Tell It on the Mountain was a Negro spiritual song, of hope. It was sung to lift spirits and spread to become this Norwegian congregation's cherished hymn of all places and all songs. A thrill of hope the weary slaves rejoice in. What child is this? It was written by a 29-year-old who had a near fatal bout of illness and having come through it alive wrote this poem to the familiar tune of Greensleeves. A thrill of hope the weary healed rejoices. Silent Night was created by an author who had, had to come up with a Christmas Eve song that could be played on guitar and be just as holy, given the reality that the church organ was under repair during that important service. A thrill of hope, the weary musician rejoices. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Many of our beloved Christmas hymns that we have come to know and to love have emerged out of the weariness of situations, of illness, persecution, absence of important pieces or people, brokenness in our lives. In other words, challenges similar and different from our current pandemic. And through those challenges, the authors experience some of the most authentic 
and beautiful and cherished words about this Christ baby, and they emerged and became our great Christmas hymns of faith. So that makes me wonder, is there hope in the weariness of our lives right now? Not just any hope, but a thrill of hope, one that will make a weary, weary world rejoice. What kind of Christ child will be birthed into this weary world we are part of right now? Does the knowledge of these beloved hymns allow us to have a thrill of hope and allow us, the weary ones, to rejoice? And yet new birth new life 
when all one can see is death surrounding and threatening to engulf. Through birthers, the weary world rejoices. Silent night, holy radiantly through the one in the manger. The star resting over the Christ child, the one who shines most brightly in the weariest of worlds. The one who came to weary parents in a weary time in history in the most weary way possible. Which makes all the rest of this worth rejoicing over. instead of us going to him, into our heartbreaks and challenges, exhaustion and hopeless situations. And through that, God births life to bring a bit of joy to some weary parents in a weary world. Mary and Joseph would have to continue on another journey longer after giving birth, fleeing Herod at the instruction of the Magi and staying away from home for some time. Our weary world is not completely healed through the events of today, through the songs, but it's the beginning of a new way of being with God and finding something to rejoice in as we continue on our own weary journey. Much like our beloved hymns help to bind memory, community, and tradition in one soaring emotional experience, our shared joyful hymns are the best means we have for connecting home and family God and community of faith, and reevaluating re this story, which is intertwined with the thrills of hope in this particularly weary year, rejoicing. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Get your candles at home. We're going to begin our candle lighting piece of the service.